You are logged on and listening to the Computer Corner Radio Show. Brought to you by Computer Corner, your local resource for computer hardware, software, services, and training since 1983. Computer Corner is high tech with a human touch. This is Phil Shortell, your host and the lead instructor at Computer Corner, and with me here today, as is the norm, are both the owners of Computer Corner, Carol and Joe Petronovich, and good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If your OPSIS is inoperative, your copy of Office is offline, or your Outbox is overloaded, let us help you. Thanks for listening to the Computer Corner Show today. We're eager to take your questions. We really enjoy helping people with their computer issues. We're here to help. You can always come see us at Computer Corner. We are located at 3101 Manal Northeast, about two blocks west of Carlisle and American Furniture. If you haven't come in to see our new place yet, please do. It's really awesome. There is not another computer showroom like ours in the entire state of New Mexico. And you'll be pleasantly surprised, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You can call Computer Corner at 8812333. On to our computer topic, which is once again a warning about backing up your data and being sure your backup is not kept in the same place as your computer. We did another service call to a business office that was vandalized and the owner's accounting computer was stolen. She had her backup drive right next to her computer along with a USB pen drive, which served as a secondary backup. Well, all of them were stolen and she had two years worth of accounting records that she lost. But wait, there's more. <laughs> she also backed up to the cloud Somewhere, <laughs> but couldn't remember where. And guess where she stored the information about where in the cloud her data was backed up? On the stolen computer, of course. Yep. So here's a person that had a backup plan, but kept everything in the same room, so still lost it all anyway. Ideally, you should back up daily and store the physical drive or device in at least, the very least, the, the, the next room, another room, if not at an off-site location. Exactly. So now on to a little story that may be of interest to you. A family in Portland, Oregon, with one of Amazon's Alexa-powered Echo devices in their house, was being secretly recorded by the device. Hmm. Apparently, Alexa woke up when it heard a word that sounded like Alexa and thought it was being summoned. Yeah, after recording an entire family conversation, Alexa was apparent, had apparently heard the words send message mm. and then somehow tapped into the family's email contact list and sent the recording to someone on the contact list, which just happened to be an employee of one of the people recorded. Fortunately, they were only talking about hardwood floors, mm -hmm. obviously very fortunate. Yes. Not a plot to overthrow the government of Burkina Faso or seal the crown jewels of England or anything like that. So all those devices that you can speak to and give commands to your speakers, your phone, your TV, and even in some cases, your refrigerator and other appliances, well... They can record anything around them. Yeah, it's bad enough that people can hack into your computer to get data, but now the door could be open to someone hacking into your home and listening to your conversations. And by the way, the capital of Burkina Faso is Ugadugu. Easy for you to say. No, it wasn't actually. I had to practice it. In case you're wondering where you need to go to overthrow that government. <laughs> no, no, not on this show. <laughs> no. So back to some computer topics. Mm -hmm. There is a couple of new malware issues happening on the internet right now. If you're surfing the web and you're looking for, and I'm sure it's not just in the computer industry, but we're going to, of course, talk about the computer industry. If you are on Dell's website or on HP's website or on IBM's website, and you click a couple of times, there's a redirect malware bit out there that will take you to a page that looks sort of like the Dell page or the HP page or the IBM page, but it's not. And they'll, of course, ask you to call a number or click on something, and then they take control of your computer. Mm -hmm. So if you're surfing the web, whether it's on your financial pages or HP or Dell, and you get redirected to a page that doesn't quite look the same, and especially if somebody is trying to get prompt you to click on something new or call a number, don't do it. That's all. Those those messages about uh, you you have a virus or whatever it is That's and you need you. to call this number. This is never true. I just had a friend call me with that this week too. Again, you would think yeah. people had heard this by shut now, it but... down, shut it down, right. reboot the computer, and hope that everything is moving along right there. You're listening to the Computer Corner Show with Carol and Joe and Phil from Computer Corner. Doug, you are on the air, and what can we help you with? Yeah. I brought my uh, computer down and had you guys copy my hard drive for me. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all did a bang up job because I guess my hard drive was only like at five percent, and y'all said it was about ready to fail, and everything copied over as far as I know so far, except for when I use the uh, Windows Media Player. I can only use it one time, and then I have to shut my computer down and reboot it, and then I can use it again one time. So I went to Microsoft to see about reinstalling it, and it says there's the only one there is is for an XP. I was wondering if I could reinstall that one in my Windows 7 computer. Mm, that's a, I, I would not do that. Yeah. That's strange that it's asking you, or it only allows you one-time usage of it. That's going to require some thought on our part, I think, so, you know? Did you initially upgrade from XP 2.7? No. I had, I think it was, yeah, I had a, a 750 gig, and I had you guys take my hard drive and put it on a terabyte. And y'all said it was at 5%, and you didn't know right. if it was going yeah. to be able to take or not, and... Like I say, everything is working as far as I can tell, except for that's the only thing. You know, if that drive was just at 5%, you're very lucky that the machine's even booting up based on the clone we did. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah. The, the, I mean, but, I was happier than heck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 Doug, I have a, a possible solution for you. What it is is to uninstall Windows Media Player and go into Control Panel and go to Windows Features in the search box and then click on Turn Windows Features On or Off, and you should be able to reinstall the Windows Media Player that way. Now, if you want okay. more detailed instructions about that, I don't want to try to read the whole thing out over the air, but you can right. send me an email at radioshow at compcorner.com. That's one word for radio show, one word for comp corner. And it's a matter of going into Control Panel and into the Programs and Features and get to Windows Features, and you should be able to, to give, give a shot at reinstalling it. Okay. Doug, one more thing. Yeah. Like I said, you're very lucky that they were able yeah. to mm -hmm. do this. My gut tells me, though, that if you've got anything important on this thing, like documents, Quicken Files, whatever, photos, back it up somewhere. Because yeah. I think you're going to be better off here in a month or two to do a fresh, clean load. Yeah, because y'all put everything on the terabyte hard drive and installed it in my computer. So yeah, yeah, I and like Joe's advice. Be sure and back everything up. That's yeah, really, really important. Yep, it sure is. I've lost everything on it once before. So wow, yeah, I yeah, and I hate losing ten years worth of pictures. There you go. Yeah. I'll never get them back. Yep. By the way, if you go you. If, if you go to a control panel to do that, you're probably going to see a message that says turning off Windows Media Player might affect other Windows features and programs installed on your computer. But go, uh -huh. ahead, but go ahead and do that, and then when you reboot the computer, turn Windows Media Player back on, and you should be okay. And again, okay. if you want the detailed instructions, send me that email to radioshow at compcorner.com. All right. Thanks. I do appreciate y'all's help earlier, and uh, thank you for your information. Today. And and we appreciate your call, Doug. Have a good day there. Bye bye. You you too now. Bye bye. I think it's important to mention that if your computer is making any kind of a different noise, or if you're if things are not working at the same pace that they used to, so your computer's running slowly, all of those things could mean a failing hard drive, or it could yeah. mean you have a virus or something else. But don't hesitate to get your computer into a shop right away, because if your hard drive is failing and you keep using it and keep booting up over and over again, eventually it's just going to die. And at right. that point, we may or may not be able to get the data off the drive for you. One of the things to think about is if you go to Computer Corner's website at www.compcorner.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen, and if you sign up for our e-newsletter, which I write, then you you will get a coupon for a free diagnostic exam that'll be sent to your email address. Mm -hmm. If you are having trouble with your computer and you want us to diagnose it, you can get a free diagnostic. Right. And that free diagnostic exam usually carries a price of $25, which is still the lowest you will find pretty much anywhere. Right. And of course, we also offer free diagnostic exams on laptops and desktops for any veteran. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you're now on the air. And what can we do for you? I purchased, uh, actually, it's become a beloved HP Elite book from you folks two years ago. 
still fascinates me that it boots in 37 seconds. Mm -hmm. Spoils you rotten. <laughs> um, it does very little wrong, but every now and then, it does not like to correctly wake up from sleep. I, I mm. never use hibernate because I never saw that work right ever in any version. But I, I agree. Sleep I do use, and most times it's fine, but every now and then, it comes back on, but the screen's black. And so you can't type any of the normal things unless you can mysteriously memorize it all, you know, from past right. experiences. So you end up having to kick the legs out from under the computer and power it off, start back up. And, of course, it says, you know, Windows wasn't shut down right. And boot. Yeah. I don't like doing that. You sound like you know what you're doing there, Mark. Did you try turning off the monitor and turning it back on? Yeah. And Jeff? when I looked online... People apparently have been having odd problems with sleep in Windows 7 since almost it came out. But right. It's That's not exactly right. Massive. So that is our so, experience, and, and we yeah. honestly don't know why it's a random problem. I don't know that it's ever been resolved by Microsoft. You know, for just sheer power saving, just turn them both off. Hibernate and sleep. You've got a solid state in there. Boots in 30 seconds. I think you're going to be better off. I have no answers on this. You're right. This problem started the minute that feature came out in Windows 7, <laughs> and no one has had a solution to those problems, including Microsoft. So okay. I That's wish I had I've an answer. That's what I've been doing for yeah. the last little while because yeah. it just gives me an unsettling feeling to be, you know, having to do something that I don't like doing a computer, which is... Right holding down the power button. Right. Uh, no, no, we're with you on that. And, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, I, I've got an HP laptop and I've got a regular desktop computer and I don't have the problem ever on either one of them. Yeah. That's but on Windows common. 10. It's very common. It is, yeah. But I think maybe they should change the term from sleep to general anesthesia <laughs> because sometimes with general anesthesia, people don't wake up. Well, I actually saw Hibernate um, on some computers that they never, ever got the computer to come up again. Mm -hmm. that's, exactly, that's exactly right. That's why all the machines that leave our store are new. All those features are totally shut off <laughs> because we had problems initially when, when the operating systems first came out. People were saying that exact same thing. I cannot get my machine to come out of Hibernate. Yeah, yeah I'm, assuming, okay. I'm assuming, Mark, you've also tried Control-Alt-Delete from there. From that black uh, screen, yeah. 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 <laughs> of yeah. course, yeah. Yeah, so at that particular point, when you're stuck like that, the only solution is to push in the power button and hold it. And, and the, the good news is that things have changed over the years. That used to be a really dangerous thing to do. But now when you push in the power button and hold it, Windows does shut down close to normal, but you still it occasionally get to, that message. It does try to close out a lot of files. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks well, for your question. Wish we had a better answer for you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. And we're going to now give you detailed instructions on how to find Burkina Faso on your computer's mapping program. <laughs> no, we're, no, we're not. not. And we're do. No, we're going to talk to Fabian. Fabian, you are on the air. Thanks so much for calling. Hello. Hello. Um, so for, I, I just have a quick question. It'll probably take a little bit of time. So do you guys have GTX 1080 Ti's over there? We do. And do you, do you know what they're priced at? Ten forty nine. How about that? Oh. Quick answer, huh? <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty nice, actually. Okay, and the next one is: Is it compatible with my processor? Because currently, I have an i five six sixty with a uh, GTX seven fifty graphics it, card. It's compatible. All right. So, Thank are you. you using thinking about using this for mining or gaming or or both? I'm going to work over the summer and try to get a mining rig, but currently, it's, it's for gaming. Yeah. Got it. You should come on into Computer Corner. Obviously, Joe knows his stuff. He knows exactly what <laughs> yeah. you're talking about. He's been building mining rigs, and we've got Ooh. some on display that might be of interest to you. Yeah. In fact, the gaming machine we have on display has the 1080 Ti in it hooked to our virtual reality system. You might want to okay. just come in and look around. Yeah, no no obligation. We're not going to try and make you buy something. Just come on in and say hello. All righty. So uh, 1080 Ti is perfectly fine with my processor? Yes. All righty. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Fabian. Bye-bye. Right. 
Well, there was, there was a, a, a complex question that got answered super quick. Well, and if Joe wasn't here, I know my stuff. We wouldn't be able to answer that question. But Joe is definitely a hardware yeah. expert, and especially when it comes to gaming, those and kind of things, hardware. those video type cards, right. you know, that uh, that you need to do the mining. And actually, anybody, if you're interested in this, come into the store. We have a couple of them on display, and it's really fascinating. And uh, Joe and actually some of the other people can explain to you exactly what's going on. You know, that card is going to be very very famous and the card worth having in mining rigs, mostly because there's a company out of Russia, believe it or not, here we go again, Mm -hmm. that has just written a software package that will increase your mining hash rate speed by 50%. It's free and it does work. It only works on the 1080 Ti and you can go from mining Ethereum at, uh, depending on your card, but but the 1080 Ti, you can mine at 39 mega hashes a second. I'm currently doing 55. Hmm. It's worth coming in and seeing all this stuff and, and ask for me when you come in, and I'll be happy to walk you through a lot of this stuff. So we should probably explain a little bit more about what mining rigs are and what they can do. The caller that called in was asking about a GPU or a graphics processing Unit is that what it is? GPU, graphic <laughs> I had mm-hmm. I had to That's get it. my brain in gear there for a minute. So it's a video card, a graphics card, a very high end one. That's why I asked if he was going to be using it for gaming or mining because he wouldn't want that in in an average computer. And obviously, since it costs over a thousand dollars for that card alone, you wouldn't need it in your average computer either. But but what's nice about owning a card like that, if you're going to want it primarily for playing games, is when you're not playing games. You start mining, let it mine all night long, and you can pay your electrical bill for the month based on that, or maybe even more. There's advantages to having that and learning how to mine. So talk about what mining is a little bit, Joe. Mining is basically you become a processing center like a MasterCard and Visa to verify transactions worldwide on people buying cryptocurrency. That said... What protects everybody from this, instead of relying on a centralized location like your bank or MasterCard and Visa, this is a decentralized method, meaning 51% of all the computers in the world have to agree on what you're trying to do at that moment to verify that it's correct. Mm. What a tremendous, secure transaction yeah. cryptocurrency in, and the blockchain technology is going to create. You mentioned another cryptocurrency thing well, this to me is, earlier. This is just a small little article I happened to pick up the other day. The Marshall Islands have made their own cryptocurrency now. What's interesting about this is they're replacing the U.S. dollar with their cryptocurrency. And since they're a member of the United Nations, this is now going to have to be accepted worldwide as currency. So it's got a lot of people thinking. And Bitcoins from the Marshall Allen's glow at night, of course. There you go. Yep. <laughs> if you, if, for those of you out there who don't know what I'm talking about, they were the site of 67 nuclear tests in the wow. 1940s and 50s. Fabian called back. Fabian, oh. you're on the air. Hello, I'm sorry. You, you mentioned something about, you know, when you're done, you, you, can, use that, uh, the, it, you can use your computer for mining? Yes. Sure. I don't know where I read it, but I believe I read something about when you do that, what you do is you put, you can't really do it without overclocking. And if you overclock, it uh, run, runs down the durability of your, uh, of your processor. That's mostly false. You can overclock, and overclocking in the old world, like people used to do with AMD processors mm-hmm, yeah. and things, meant, yes, you, you, yeah. you really push the card or the processor to the limit. What I'm currently doing is I'm overclocking and undervolting the card. So I'm only running the card at 60% power, but yet overclocking it. There is absolutely no harm going to be done to those cards. Or the processor. Mm. Okay. Does that answer your question, Uh, Fabian? It did. Okay. And then also, what's a good way to get into it just like as a beginner? Well, you can do what I did and go on vacation for a week. And in your motel room, you watch every video you can find (laughs) on cryptocurrency and putting together a mining rig. And then learning well, how to use the software. In a week, so. There you go. <laughs> Preferably, I might want to run it while I'm in vacation, huh? You could. If you're away from it, let it run. You know, the best thing to do is come in sometime and, yeah. see, and see me. We can talk. 
Okay. And it sounds like you speak the same language, the two of you, so I think that'll be an interesting conversation. Come on down, Fabian. We'd love to see you. Or anybody you. else who wants to yeah. come down. Bye-bye, Fabian. Of course, on my home computer, and I work from home most of the time in my home office, and I have a nice home computer, but when I log off for the day, I turn on mining so that my computer is working for me all mm-hmm. night long now, uh, and earning, uh, earning uh, cryptocurrency for me. On Carol's machine, she only has a... GTX 1070 Ti, <laughs> smaller hash rate, and mostly because we didn't want all the heat generated within our case, and that was the only card we could find that wouldn't, we would have to run the machine with the sides off and everything else, so right. that was the card we chose. Okay, and John, you're on the air. Good morning to all. Good, Good morning. morning. John? I keep getting an error a message on my computer and what it's telling me, well, the error is HTTP error 502. And I'm wondering if the problem it says is the problem accessing ZCS upstream server refuses to connect. What program are you trying to open up that where you're getting this message? Well, it's, as soon as I go to my window screen and then I go to my mail, and then when I'm on my, trying to open my mail up, this is what happens. Where's your mail from? Who's your Internet service provider that um, you're getting the mail from? It's with CenturyLink. Hmm. Do I need to call Probably. them? Probably. Yes. Something's wrong with your protocols connecting and verifying that you're who you are. Oh, okay. All righty. Well, I'll give them a call. But there's no problems with any other program or or navigating in Windows or anything other than that, Uh, right? No, sir. Would would you think a a reboot of the modem might pull them out of that? You could. Have you have you tried rebooting your router from them? Uh, No, I haven't. First Uh, step, yeah. Just unplug it. Wait. You know, they say thirty seconds. I would wait a couple minutes. Uh, and then plug okay. it in, let it reboot, and try it again. The reason I thought of that is today is Saturday, and every Saturday I unplug my router for three minutes and then plug it back in. Very good. <laughs> that's what they're going to that, try then. That's the first thing they're going to tell you to do anyway. So. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your call, John. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Don, thank you very much for your call. What can we do for you? Is this going to be another mining call? If not, we're uh, happy. No, no, it isn't. Okay, we're happy no matter what it is, though. <laughs> My question is, I got Google Chrome, and whenever, whenever I open Google Chrome, the tabs on the top open about six different tabs of my last... The last things you went last, to. Went to, yeah. And every time I open it, it, it always opens up the other ones, and I was wondering what's going on. Okay, over at the extreme right of the screen, you should see three dots. Click yeah. on them. Go into settings, and it looks like there are two ways that that could happen to you. One is that you accidentally save them as your home pages, and you can change okay. that by going in there and looking for the home page setting. The other thing is that Google Chrome, if it shuts down abnormally, asks you when it starts up if you would like to open your previous pages. So it should be one of those two things. If it's happening all the time, go to the three dots, find settings, and you should find the setting in there for at start. I don't remember the exact wording, and they don't have Google Chrome on the computer in front of me. It's going to be something along the lines of open the following pages at start, and that should help you fix it up. Okay, one last Now Sure. I have Edge. Uh-huh. Um, and whenever I open it up, it's opening up 20 browsers. Same it thing. On and keeps on. Same, Same thing, thing over at the right-hand top of the screen. And by the way, in the studio, they don't have Edge either, but that's a whole other story. But you should be able to go in there and find the setting inside it for home pages, clean it out, and then start it up again, and you should be home free. Okay. Okay, Joe. Th- thank you. Thank you, Don. Appreciate okay. your call. Bye-bye. I got credit for that one. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, then I'll take credit for the one about the video mining and and stuff like that. But no, I can't take credit for that. That's your area. Evelyn, you have called us, and we are listening to you, and we want to find out what we can do to help. Hi. uh, This morning on the news, we heard about the Russians hacking routers. Mm Mm-hmm. And wondering if it's as serious as it sounds. Do you have nuclear secrets on your computer, Evelyn? No. Then it's not that serious. <laughs> I don't want to belittle that. It, hacking is certainly going on all over the place in the world. But your router should have its built-in protections of its firewall right. and uh, the password to get in. And I don't think the Russians are interested in me or probably not in you either. 
as far as trying to do that. So I, I really wouldn't worry that much about it. Always be vigilant. We talked at the beginning of the show about messages that come out that, that say your computer's been infected, blah, blah, blah. And those are always bogus. And if you just take care and make sure you know where you're going when you're going to a website, you should be fine. Okay. Okay. I also might want to mention that if you get any little pop-up down below that says your Java needs updated, your, yeah. your something needs updated, don't click there. Just shut that thing off and then go to Java or Adobe and update from there. Yeah, always update from the manufacturer's website. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you for your call, Evelyn. I bet you're not the only one out there who was thinking about that. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Russian Bye. stuff is in the news every right. day. Right. I am still disappointed that there's not more good news being broadcast. And it seems like there's just this, this era of panic and uh, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do the rest of the program in Russian for you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, which is about the only thing I can say that I could say well, over the air and not have the FCC get oh involved. Oh, right. Well, I was impressed there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that Computer Corner also does computer recycling. So yeah. if you have old electronic equipment, you can bring it into Computer Corner. We can't take the big CRT-style monitors, the, the big old ones, just because of some of the, the laws within the state of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. But we can take just about anything else, old UPSs, batteries, cell phones, flat screen and it's uh, and we recycle these. We have it done properly so that uh, it does not get into the landfill and affect the water supply and stuff like that. So, any of you out there, if you're thinking of getting rid of something, don't just dump it. Bring it to us, and we'll get you uh, a receipt for it. We do work with a nonprofit organization. You'll get a donation certificate from them, and you'll also get some coupons for service and mm -hmm. training and a new computer at Computer Corner. So. Okay. The Computer Corner Show will be back in two weeks. Till then, we hope that you'll think of Computer Corner for all your hardware, software, services, and training needs. Remember, you can do more at the corner. Computer Corner. Until that time, mind your bits and bites. This is Phil. And Carol. And Joe. Wishing you carefree computing. The Computer Corner Radio Show is logging off. <laughs>